ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to please welcome the newly elected City of Waukegan's Mayor, Mayor Wayne Motley. All right, well, very, very first thing I want to ask you, I, I pulled up, I don't know if you guys seen it outside. I saw a motorcycle. Did you guys see that? That's his. That's pretty cool. How about a round of applause for that? When you see him driving around in a suit and tie, and not just a suit and tie, but a Jerry Garcia tie, right? I got one on two for you. Um, you know, I'm all in, I work in advertising, and all the time I ask my clients, how did you get into doing what you do? Okay? Wayne, you started off as a police officer, then city clerk, now mayor. Why? Well, um, first of all, I, I started as a place as a placeman. I went through the ranks, uh, became involved in the union. I saw the discrepancy between the police department and the city. It was a very adversarial relationship, and I hated it. I, I understood that at some time we had disagreements and different points of view, but at the end of the day, our responsibility is to come to some type of mutual understanding. That wasn't happening in our community, and uh, through. Through my trials and tribulations, I understood that in order to make things change, I had to come from the patrol division and the union in the management. So I took the sergeant's test. And I took it only because Larry Tempest was an alderman at the time. He, he actually coerced me to take the union examination. <laughs> <laughs> I took the exam. I started to move um, from the union position and understand the management position. And believe me, that helped me substantially in my further uh, in my further careers, um, I had the great opportunity to work on, under the uh, guidance of Greg Petrie at the Park District. Uh, Greg and his staff taught me so much about management, so much about reality of what really occurs in business. Um, I worked. I was very fortunate again to work nine years as the chairman of the Housing Authority. Um, that's when reality set in, and I understood that. People were hired because they were friends of friends. They had to stop. In my years uh, on the housing authority, I fired 17 people, and I fired them because they weren't competent. And that was a new thing that you know we all agreed. When I took office as mayor, I think those of you who are in office now, especially all of you, know we had some issues there. I addressed those issues by terminating people immediately, and. There's been a lot of controversy and confusion in the newspapers about who Wayne Motley is and that Wayne Motley hired his friends. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I surrounded myself by my friends, and I did that not as a payback politically. I did that because the people who I surround myself with are my friends, but most important, they're extremely intelligent men and ladies, and they look out for my best interest because sometimes I don't. So. Here we are today to discuss issues of importance to our community, and I can tell you this, do not ask me a question unless you really want the answer, because I will break your heart in a heartbeat. <laughs> I am not the kind of man that will him and haw, and I think those of you sitting in this office right now, sitting in this room, will say, you know what, this guy's the real guy, because I do actually tell you the truth, because I'm terrible at remembering lies. <laughs> so that being said, here I am. Now, who'd expect a young man from Princeton, West Virginia, grew up poor, went through all types of difficulties in my life. Every time I screwed up, I learned a valuable lesson about life. And that has made me the man I am today. Cool. You know, in reference to that, you've given over 38 years of your career to your hometown. What changes have you seen over the years that you liked the best, and what changes have you seen that were bad, and how can they be improved? Well, I think the things I've seen that were, were bad, I think most of us agree, you know, I, and I tell this story quite frequently. For 27 years, I had the privilege of wearing a uniform, and on that uniform was a, was a patch, and that patch said, well, King the City of Progress. And the first thing I realized was that was a lie. Joaquin was not progressing. Joaquin was not moving forward. Joaquin was stagnant. There were promises made to people that weren't fulfilled. My obligation and responsibility when I took office was to change the perception of Joaquin. I think as we all know, your perception of a motorcycle driver 
is a man with long hair, dirty fingernails, and a beard. Okay, that's, I ride a Harley. And people who see me are in awe that I don't look that way. That's a perception. There's also a perception that real men don't wear pink. <laughs> Obviously, that is really a misconception. <laughs> but I think, I think um, what's, what I've seen that really bothers me is that over the last four years, Joaquin has lost the sense of who we are. <coughs> there was very little cooperation between the different uh, groups. Um, I have committed to myself to working with Dr. Batiste at the school board because I realize this. I realize that where the school district goes, so goes the city of Waukegan. That is the truth. People who don't understand that have issues mentally. <laughs> we are who we are. And without helping one another, we cannot move forward. I have committed myself personally to addressing issues at once. Um, if there's an issue at the park district, Greg Petrie calls me up, and I'm gonna tell you, Greg, you, you, can, you can relate to this. We iron that problem out immediately. Dr. Batiste, we had a meeting, and Dr. Batiste and I agreed that it would be in our best interest to work together for the betterment of our community, which we do. Uh, Pat Jones and I work very well together. There again, Pat Jones and I graduated high school together. Pat Jones. Well, that's a scary thought, too. That brings back some other men. <laughs> but we are a community, a very diverse community. And I want our city hall to reflect that diversity. If you come to city hall today, you will see any number of ethnic groups together. And that, that itself is the strength of our community. We need to welcome and embrace our differences. Because if we don't, we're headed for a terrible, terrible end. So I think what I bring to the table is I'm extremely honest and open about who I am and what I am. But for the grace of God, I would be nothing. I've accomplished a lot in my life. I'm very proud of that fact. But it's not about Wayne Motley. It's about you. It's about seven men and two women who have really driven this bus. And those are the aldermen of the city of Waukegan. Because Regardless of how much I want to do or how much I want to accomplish, without their assistance and cooperation, I can, I can do nothing. I think most of you who have, have been witness to the last four or five months of city council meetings, you'll notice how calm and surreal it is. It's almost frightening. And, and I'll tell you what, in all honesty, the most frightening thing for me is that me and Larry Tempest get along. <laughs> so. At the end of the day, I, I have to thank the aldermen of our community for helping me help our community prosper and grow. We're moving forward rapidly. I've been negotiating with North States Bank, more in particular, my good friend and lifelong friend, Kerry Begay, to acquire several parcels of land along Lakefront. As many of you know, there is a master plan, but no one's done anything with it. I hope within the next four years, right now we're in active negotiations with two parcels of land, one being the old um, Diamond Scrapyard, the other one being the North States Bank property under the uh, 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 Canadian National Railroad tracks. Those are two parcels we're extremely interested in. I would like to take possession of those properties and also have site control, because who better to run and develop that, that property than the city of Waukegan? I cannot wait on a developer to come in here and tell me what they want to do because we've had so many promises over the years that I, I just don't trust developers. I don't trust people who come in and tell me what they're going to do and hold that property in limbo for now how many years? The master plan's been, in, in, been there for how many years? We have a developer now who's had the right of first refusal on that property for eight years. He has done nothing. So I, I, can, I can assure you of this. I will not make any promises to you that I can't keep. And I promise all of you sitting down there that Waukegan is headed in the direction it should have been headed years ago. And at the end of the day, don't thank me. Thank yourselves and thank those aldermen and all those women who have the courage to stand by me through the difficult situation. You know, Wayne, you, you obviously are a Waukegan resident and, and a lot of history here. And I think a lot of people in the audience too, you know, back in the day, uh, Waukegan was a big hub 
for entertainment and industry. Uh, let's go to the entertainment side. Now that master plan, you know, the lakefront is gorgeous. You, you've got a huge lake out here that I don't even think the west side of the county even uses. You know, and we need to get those people here. How can we do that? I mean, obviously with the execution of the master plan, but how can we get them here before that? You know, we've got the gorgeous lakefront, the, the wonderful marina. How do we get those people from Libertyville and Gurney and Grace Lake and Lake Forest to come into Waukegan? Well, what we have to do, first of all, is it, it, it's interesting because as we talk about perceptions and reality, I was really taken aback by the fact I'm on my high school reunion committee, and I attended one of their meetings as the mayor of the city of Waukegan, and I was there with my peers, my classmates, and I noticed that a lot of them weren't there, and I found out that they weren't there because they were afraid to come south or east of Green Bay Road because they thought they'd be raped, robbed, or murdered. That's the perception. That is not the reality. And those of you who live and work here know that the perception always outweighs the reality. So what we have to do, first of all, is we have to change the perception of Waukegan. I am not ashamed to tell you that I am very proud of the fact that we have a mixed and very diverse community. And that works to our benefit. But we have to change the attitudes and the perceptions of our community. And we're working diligently on that with probably the best guy I know to do that, and a guy that I trust explicitly, and that's my son David. David is a marketing and public relations director for the city, and we're working hard on changing perceptions. Obviously, you're, you're, a, politic, you're a politician now. Um, you met with Governor Quinn. We want to be a fly on that wall. <laughs> what was that conversation about? Well, when I took office, um, unbeknownst to a lot of you, when I got the next morning, um, my office, the office of the mayor was absolutely empty. The mayor had vacated that position. He left. And I asked him, Mayor, what are you doing? He said, I'm done. You can have the office. So the next day I began to make changes. Um, one of the commitments I made was to do what I could, first of all, to get money to work on infrastructure, money to get the railroad, purchase some of the property on the railroad, to work on the casino, and to make Waukegan a viable place for people to live, work, and play, which is a slogan of the park. <coughs> so I stole that from you, Greg. But the conversation with Governor Quinn was very straightforward. I told him that I needed him to support the position of Waukegan, was that we need the casino. We absolutely need the casino. The casino is a driving force behind development of the lakefront. He agreed with me on that. He agreed to support us in our endeavors. Um, McGuire Woods is our is our lobbyist who works with us in Springfield. The governor was aware of the fact that McGuire Woods was our lobbyist, and he has worked diligently with them to this day. So we have an ally down there with McGuire Woods and Governor Quinn. But I was so so impressed with his sincerity and his honesty, and he is probably one of the most direct men that I've discussed issues with. And uh, in spite of what you may think, he is a very compassionate man. He sees how important Mark Keegan is. And tomorrow at 2 o'clock, he will be here. And tomorrow at 2 o'clock, we will be making an announcement that impacts this community substantially. It's going to be a $48 million announcement. And tomorrow at 2 o'clock, 2.15, we'll make that announcement. But I think that in all reality, Governor Quinn is who he says he is and he does look out for this community. Okay. You know, uh, Wayne, in business, and, and probably 90% of the people out here own businesses, um, in the past, I've heard it was a pain in the butt to get a business license. What, um, how does that process work, and what changes have you made to make that easier for a business owner? Well, the first thing I did, the first day in office, I fired the license administrator. I replaced her with Joy Torres, who is a friend, an ally, a man I've known for many, many years. It used to take two weeks. How many of you have been to the city hall to get a business license? Raise your hand, please. It used to take weeks to get that done. We do it now in three days. What we do now is 
I am not concerned about your background check if you're not involved with liquor or children. We've eliminated that. We do inspections. We used to do it every Tuesday. Now we do it every day. We used to be closed every Friday. There's someone in that office every day. We don't close at lunch like we used to. We are here to serve the public. That's our responsibility. In my office, my office is never empty. I start work at 7 a.m. and I get home when I get home. And that's the way life actually is. So I can assure you, if you want to come to my office and talk to me, my door is never closed. It's never closed. Um, if you want to come to me and, and argue with me, that's great. I love it. I love it. I, I've been married for 30 years and I'm very good. And I learn very quickly. And I learned this, men, please bear with me. I learned very quickly that I'm the boss of my house when my wife lets me. Yeah. <laughs> so we discuss, come to my office, we'll talk about it, we will come to a reasonable solution to a problem, and there's nothing that we can't resolve. And I'll, and I'll tell you a way I can preface that. We have been in arbitration with the PBLC, which is the police union, for over a year on issues that they could not resolve. Okay, for one year. That is a very costly endeavor because we paid two attorneys for all those sessions. And most of those things, those the attorneys are making three hundred to four hundred dollars an hour. And we do day upon day of this. My good friend and ally, Steve Martin, who's our corporation counsel, who we hired, we hired for hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, as opposed to three hundred and five thousand dollars a year. His office is right across the hall from me. So now Steve Martin, when we have an issue, anyone in the city has an issue, they can go to Steve's office and get, get a response from an attorney who looks out for me because he is my friend and ally. And we work so well, all of us together, that it's, it's sometimes frightening to see the cooperation that exists within our city. Come to City Hall today, come tomorrow, come Friday, and the first thing you'll notice that people are cordial, people smile, and they will treat you with the respect and dignity that you all so rightfully deserve. Okay. Um, you know, let's move back to the entertainment um, concept there real quick. The Genesee Theater. My first movie there as a kid was Torah, Torah, Torah <laughs> with my dad. Okay. Love the theater now. Was there for the opening and been to many shows. What do, what's going on with the theater and what's the, the future looking like? Well, we... Uh, we committed during our campaign to change administration at the theater. Um, Lisa May, who is one of our aldermen, has been instrumental in, in affecting that change. Is Lisa here? Well, Lisa, you know I love you. Lisa's been done a great job, so we can thank her for helping us make this work. But what's happened there is most of you know when the Genesee Theater started, um, it was supposed to be a catalyst for development in downtown. That never happened. It never happened simply because there weren't enough shows to bolster the downtown and fill the restaurants. During the week when there was a show, every restaurant was full. But once or twice a month is not sufficient to make to drive that bus. So what we what the city did was we changed administration there. Uh, we now have Churchill Productions who's taken over the administration of that facility. And I have to tell you, they thus far have done remarkable things. And they doubled, they doubled the amount of shows in the first year. Now that speaks volumes of who they are of, and of their character and their commitment. So we are moving forward rapidly on changing that, that area as well. You know, with all the uh, ethnicities in the Waukegan area, obviously it'd be a, a good idea to target the different ethnic groups and have shows there for them. Is that something that's in their game plan? Because it really hasn't happened you know in the past and it will happen and that was one of the first things that we discussed with Churchill was the fact that we needed we needed to be diverse diversify our shows because as many of you know we have a large Hispanic population and I, I can tell you this I don't know how many of you attended the mariachi um, play when it was there um, but I have to tell you I'm a rough tough guy and at the end of that show it was, it was bilingual. It was interpreted through Spanish and English. And 
and to be perfectly honest with you, the guy who's seen death and destruction for 27 years was actually in tears at the end of that film. That's how, how things happen in this group. We have to reach out to the different ethnic groups because you know, we are diverse. We have to let every ethnic group in our community understand how important it is that their culture be represented in our city. You know, and, and that's the importance of diversifying that theater. And also, another thing, that theater was purchased by tax dollars. But our organizations within the city, when they want to do something, they, they have to spend $10,000 to open the door because of the union contracts. And we have no control over that. I think now that Churchill Productions is looking to, to change that, we want to get our community organizations involved. And we don't want to have to spend $10,000 for a fundraiser that benefits a group of nonprofit people. I mean, it, it just doesn't seem fair that you want to go out there and commit to helping a, 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 an organization and you take a third of their profits or more before they open the doors. And, that, and that's, not, that's not realistic. You know, shifting gears on the, on the motorcycle, in regards to the community and the economic uh, the way it's been lately and uh, hopefully people are seeing an upswing in regards to business but we still have a lot of foreclosures out there um, left and right in all of Lake County not just Waukegan but throughout the entire county in fact Highland Park has quite a few of them um, the ones that we have in Waukegan how are you dealing with these properties um, you know in some communities they've been havens for criminal activity obviously we want to avoid that so what are you doing to well what we're doing is first of all we have to the problem when they vacate a business, when they vacate a property, the problem becomes not who owns it, who manages it. A lot of banks have just walked away from it and left them. Um, that causes us issues because we have to go into court and we have to take possession of those properties. Now, what we what we've done is we locate the owners. We, we're holding them accountable. If it's a bank, we give them an option of either fixing fixing the problem, or we want to fix it and build them, or as you're going to see within the end of this month, uh, we're going to tear the buildings down. We have 10 scheduled to be destroyed within the, before the end of the year. And I will be on the bulldozer within the month <coughs> tearing down our first building. Let's uh, change gears uh, on that motorcycle again. But now we're talking about uh, the Lake County Courthouse. There's an expansion in the works. Can you elaborate uh, on that and tell us about it? Well, we've, we've had a good fortune to have an open dialogue with the uh, with Lake County administration. Um, we've agreed to assist them in their endeavors. We've uh, they're going to they're going to add seven seven floors and seven new courtrooms to the to the courthouse, which will will certainly reduce um, the time it takes to get into court and out of court. Um, their design is absolutely beautiful. We've asked them for certain things along the way. One of the things we've asked them to do during the period of time they're under construction is to tear down that terrible walkway between the building. That is an atrocious site. It, uh, it's, it takes away from the beauty of the downtown and it screams our beautiful lakefront uh, because as you know, it's a brick wall that hangs in, in midair. Uh, that's gonna change drastically. It's either gonna come down or we're gonna make it a glass structure. So we're working on that, but we are working with them and partnershiping to help them get this accomplished. And at the end of the day, it benefits all of us. We keep we keep courthouse here. We keep the revenue generated by people who participate and attend the courts. So it is uh, an economic uh, issue for us as well. You know, we're, we're I want to switch gears again, to going into third gear now on that motorcycle. The the lakefront, the train station, to make that walkway from the lakefront to downtown, obviously, I'm a boater. I come into Waukegan all the time. You want to get off and go up and you know go to Greentown or some of the, the, the restaurants and bars, how can you make that more accessible for the boaters and, and for people to spend money in Waukegan that are on the lake? The, the, the train station seems to be an, a hindrance for people to come up. What are your thoughts on that? It is an issue, and we are working with Metro on that. Um, we're actually looking, the, the station now is old and antiquated. 
and it certainly is not a welcoming point to our community. It's been it's been uh, overlooked for many many years. The tracks are extremely dangerous. In order for a person to, to get to or get from the lakefront, they have to cross six railroad tracks. And there's been several near, near misses there, and we are working with uh, Union Pacific and Metro to change those those tracks. And we are looking uh, long term to to uh, destroy that station and build a new one that will be more accessible to the community. What is a zip car? Uh, I've heard some, some stuff about a zip car. Can you elaborate uh, on that? A zip car, um, you know, I, I have to tell you, I, I, I just, when they came to Waukegan and proposed this, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. A zip car is a vehicle that's parked at, at our train station. What you do is you call, you give them your credit card, you become a member. When you get off the train, you're, you have a membership. You go to a car that's parked there. You take that car, you drive it for the day, you pay $8 an hour to drive this car as long as you choose, and the $8 includes gas, insurance, and your use of that vehicle. We're putting two in now to see if, if the plan will work. Um, I'm sure it will. At the end of the day, uh, we will expand that. that. Um, as many of you know, to take a cab, it was extremely expensive. The zip car allows someone who needs to get to a Baxter property or a property within our within our county quickly and come back quickly and pay a minimum amount of money. So it, it seems to work well. The concept to me is very plausible. So now we have to confirm the reality of it. And so we decided for the next four months to test the zip car and see if it works to our advantage. Sounds like a unique concept, at least, I mean, for people that will use the train in the metro. We have a, a question from our audience. I understand that Waukegan needs businesses. However, there's been a number of liquor stores coming into the city. They are detrimental to health, families, and to the children. Will you continue to give liquor licenses <coughs> in the city? No, we have, a, we have a limited number of liquor licenses. Once they hit that number, that's done. The big thing today, as most of you know who are in, in positions of authority in these municipalities, the big thing today is our gaming licenses. And most people are getting liquor licenses not because they want liquor, they want the gaming. Because the gaming draws substantial revenue into their businesses. As a matter of fact, before what happened two weeks ago that came before my desk, was we had a bakery that wanted a liquor license so they could get the gaming. <laughs> so I can tell you this: once we hit our number, tequila it's done. donuts. Sorry. It's done. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. But another issue that that we talk about liquor and liquor establishments, the city has been plagued with, with inequality with liquor licenses. Some liquor licenses go to four o'clock, some go to three o'clock, some go to two o'clock. Next year in May, when we establish the number of liquor licenses. In the time, all liquor licenses in our community will end at two o'clock. Because I can tell you this: when I was a young policeman, I worked at Bertrands, and Bertrands was open at four a.m. and no one came to Bertrands sober at two a.m. So for me, coming from that environment and allow drunks, and I know to be drunks, going from a bar at two o'clock, drunk to another bar to get drunker and leaving is ludicrous. I want to allow that. So next year. All liquor licenses will, will expire at 2 a.m. Will they have the opportunity to extend those on, on special nights? Three nights a year, they will be able to have an extended license, yes. Okay. Another question from the audience. If a casino comes to Waukegan, where, in your opinion, is the best location? There's not a question in my mind of, of if. The question is when. I can say this with all assuredness, we will get that casino license. We fit the criteria for that license 100%. We have been working diligently to get that license. Um, and I, I discussed two locations for that, for that license. Um, one was the lakefront. That way we could keep the tax dollars in Waukegan in the school district to benefit our school district. The unfortunate thing about it is this. 
the reality is this. Fountain Square is without question the best location for that. And the, the reason it is because it's two main, it's between two major thoroughfares, 294 and 41. And what we like to do here is capture the most people as possible um, to make the casino actually work. Um, the casino, the partner, we have a partner. And behind the scenes, we've been working with this partner now for three, almost three and a half months. And I've been in office over four. So you can see how serious we are about this. And the partner that we have is probably the best known casino manager in the state of Illinois, if not the United States. He doesn't have to go out and find money. He doesn't have to go out and get partners. He has the working capital to make this work immediately. And believe me, he is the real deal. And mark this down on a piece of paper that on this day, the mayor of Waukegan told me that we will have a casino, and you know what? He is not a liar. So we will get that casino. Are you a gambler? Well, no. <laughs> uh, prime example of this, and I can say this only because it is the truth, and Steve Martin will tell you this. Steve Martin is, of course, you know, he's our attorney. I went to Las Vegas for the teacher, uh, for the uh, mayor's conference, and as I left, Steve Martin gave me a $100 bill. And he said, help me out, give me some money. I came back and I gave Steve his $100 bill back. <laughs> Not that I don't gamble, you know what, and I, the reason I don't gamble is personal, and I'll tell you why I don't gamble. I was a single parent for 12 years. I had two children. I raised them without a mother. And gambling was not an option for me. Feeding my children was an option that I had to excel. So every dime I had, I spent on my children. And I remember I got paid every two weeks, and every week, other week I had to go to the bank and get a cash advance on my credit card because I couldn't support a mortgage payment, a car payment, and two children. So I don't gamble specifically because my priorities were not gambling, but my priorities were my, were my family. Okay. Are there any plans? To <laughs> the Waukegan Park or the Waukegan Public Library recently won an award. Are there any plans to expand or enhance the Waukegan Public Library? Um, that issue, um, of course, you know that the city, the city works with their taxes. We help them financially. Um, they're not a separate taxing body. Their tax revenue is drawn from the city of Waukegan, and uh, and I know that Richard Lee and the people at the at the library have done an outstanding job. And I have to tell you. As a member of this community, not just as the mayor, but as a, as a member of this community, I'm so proud of their efforts and so proud of their commitment to our community. Um, they have done something that's never been done before. Imagine being one of the top five libraries in the United States. I mean, that's the, that speaks volumes of our library and the commitment of those people who work there. Um, as far as helping them go, uh, we will do what we can, but understand the tax levy is coming up in December. And as a first as a first term mayor, I certainly do not want to raise those taxes and the tax levy. I don't want to do that. But um, I can I can tell you this: if I have to, in spite of the fact that I know that's detrimental to me personally, if that comes to pass, I will do that in a heartbeat. Do I want to? No. But rest assured, I will do what I can to make this city grow and prosper. So um, I'm looking I'm looking to keep the levy flat. And that in itself will impact the library because if I hold the levy flat, they're not going to get any money. You know, Wayne, obviously, again, you've been a part of the community for 38 years plus. What is your vision of the city of Waukegan moving forward, your vision and where you want to take it? Uh, my vision is to, first of all, develop the lakefront. I told you that I'm actively seeking and negotiating with two parcels. Those two parcels are 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 in the debt. You know, they're not. They're they're in the plan to be purchased within the year. But there are two more parcels that fit into this puzzle. The other two parcels are the Bombardier property, which is old Johnson Motors plant two, which is now for sale. The other parcel is the um, Gibson plant. Now we currently hold a, a lease on that property for the next 13 years. So we can't do anything actively there for 13 years. 
And after 13 years, we have, they have a 50-year option. So ultimately, what I'd like to do is I'd like to purchase all four of those parcels of property. We currently have the financing to purchase the property of uh, the old diamond scrapyard. We currently have that money. Um, Carrie B. Gay and I with the bank, North States Bank, are actively pursuing what the dollar amount's gonna be to purchase that property. I asked the um, city council when I took office, when I re-looked, I re-evaluated um, um, the budget. I asked city council members to pass an appropriation ordinance with $10 million in that ordinance. $7 million of the appropriations will go to infrastructure repair. As many of you know, our city is in dire straits of, in, for roads, sewers, things of that nature. We haven't done that in years because we haven't had the money. $3 million of that appropriations, if the budget passes with this in, will be for land purchase. That $3 million plus the million and a half dollars we currently have on in our till would, would, would acquire all four of those parcels. Now, what happens is not up to me. You ask me what I'd like to see happen. That's what I'd like to see happen. I'd like to see site control of all four of those parcels. The uh, gypsum plant would not benefit me now. And in my lifetime, I won't see things happen. But down the line, one mayor will say to me, you know, that Motley was a pretty sharp guy. He had the, he had the knowledge and courage to purchase this property in X amount of years ago for future development. Um, so Lakefront is really the key to us. I imagine and envision condominiums, single family homes, and destination locations, being restaurants of that nature. I also see the park district becoming involved in this. And for me, having worked in that endeavor and having good friends on the park district, I think we can make that work. On top of the hill, I think that the Genesee Theater and the new management will, will change attitudes and will become the catalyst for development downtown. Out west, with the casino and a, an extra $5 million a year to help, um, to help move our developments forward is gonna be um, really instrumental in, in changing um, this area. But I, I think the most important thing for us collectively to do is to change attitudes, change perceptions, and get people excited and interested in being here. I have to tell you, I've been rejuvenated over the last four years because when I've approached businesses, and there are a lot of developers out there that I have I've talked to personally and come to my office, and there's a new sense of the willingness to participate and share in development in our city. And I can't tell you how refreshing it is to have three people, three different developers, fighting over one parcel of land in Muskie. That, that is something that's never happened, and it's currently happening right now. So. I, I see a bright future for Waukegan. Um, I will never speak ill of this community. It's changed substantially from when I was younger, but it's not changed for the worse. It's just, it's in transition. And if we understand that we are moving towards something better, and those of you in business know that it, it does take time to change, but we are gonna take that time. And I can tell you this and assure you of this, well, Keegan is moving forward, and it will become the city that I so deeply love. It's going to be the city of progress. You know, being a police officer, <laughs> you know, being a police officer, and then the uh, clerk, clerk, and now the mayor. What's your favorite favorite thing about being mayor? Well, uh, it's not the hours. I'll be honest. Yeah. Would that be the least favorite then? That's the least favorite. <laughs> but that being said, when I took office, uh, I knew that this was going to be a very time-consuming thing. I think the, the most important thing, the thing that I enjoy the most, is interacting with the different agencies, the different developers, um, the sense of cooperation now that we, we are uh, experiencing. Um, Dr. Batista and I talk quite often. We, uh, we have agreed that, that we need to talk more frequently. Fred Petrie and I will talk quite frequently. We have, uh, we have developed uh, an uh, intergovernmental 
conference that we all meet. Uh, Dr. Batiste and the school board had the first meeting, and we got all the uh, different government entities together to keep each other informed of what's happening, how we want to move forward. Um, the next one will be next month in, that the city of Joaquin is hosting. So I think the most important thing for me is having the opportunity to see what I can do to help other people become engaged in move, moving this city to a brighter future. Okay. We're going to shift that motorcycle in the fifth gear now, Wayne. We're going to have some fun. We're, we're about wrapping it up. I'm going to give you some quick questions. Just say the first thing that comes to mind. Bears Packers. Come on. <laughs> You know, First thing that I, comes to oh, mind. Oh, Come on, folks. I want you to look at me. I just look stupid. If you don't like the bears, you can leave this room. I'm sorry, but I am a Green Bay Packers fan. <clears throat> okay, uh, Cubs. I'm honest. I could have not said nothing. Okay, Bears, Packers. So Bears, Cub Sox. Lovable losers. <laughs> Halloween or Christmas? Christmas. Cadillac or Mercedes? Neither. <laughs> Pizza or wings? Pizza. Steak or seafood? Steak. Motorcycles or mopeds? <laughs> of course I threw that in there. I'm not on drugs. <laughs> Motorcycle. Golf or soccer? Both. Golf or soccer? Both. Politicians. Golf or soccer? Soccer. Thank you, sir. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Beer or liquor? Well, I, I'm going to explain this to you. <laughs> I said it was a speed round, Here, but... Here's the deal. At some point in my life, if someone were to find me dead in a hotel room and would want to know if I were murdered or died of natural causes, in that room, is a cigarette or a beer, someone killed me. I don't, I've never had a beer in my life, okay. and I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. So that being said. Okay, got two left. Fast cars, slow women. <laughs> you know, honey, I'm gonna answer this, but this is before I met you. <laughs> Fast cars. And last but not least, Ginger or Marianne? Said I could ask anything I wanted, Wayne. Well, how about Gilligan? I didn't think you were going that way, but <laughs> Professor you know or Gilligan? Every man that I know, if you didn't like Ginger, you had some mental issues. So I see that you're a Bears and Cubs fan. You prefer Christmas. You don't like a Cadillac or a Mercedes. You'd rather have pizza and steak while riding your motorcycle <laughs> playing soccer. Uh, having chocolate with uh, fast cars and having ginger inside. <laughs> That's, that seems Isn't to sum up his personality. Cold. Right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, you get the true personality of our mayor. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up our Wake Up with Waukegan. My name is Robert Allen Kutzler from WXLC, 95 Will Rock, 1050 AM, and ESPN Deportes. Mayor, thank you very much for your time this morning.